Okay, George, so having a look at your email with that collet on how to um, how to get that looking rounded and nice ready for setting. Um, you, you, you've started out right, you've started your fillet edge around there. Um, this top part, if you try to fillet bigger than X amount, you're going to probably end up in trouble as you have seen. So let me just recreate uh, your geometry quickly. I'm going to just go with um, bigger carrot stone if I can. And let's just do a bezel. Okay, so as you'd be aware, these are pretty much our production standard. All right, when we produce these things, we make them for a certain for a certain way that guy can set them, rather than um, anything else. I'm not going to bother making the undercuts. I'm just going to do the top ones. Okay, and that's probably this little lip over here is probably what's giving you a lot more of your trouble as well. All right, so let's leave that like that. Nothing else. We don't need any domes. We're happy with that where it is. So let's cut it now to... Um, to give us our collet. So we're going to go head cutter, head cutter, head cutter, what are they calling it nowadays? Uh, bezel cutter, bezel, bezel cutter, there we go. Alright, so you're going to spool in as on yes, surface is that guy. Alright, so we let's switch out to shaded. Control Z, bezel cutter, I'm going to sick. And let's pick our surface. All right. So let's maneuver this so that our head is looking pretty much the way we want it to. It would be nice if these things were actually reading. Mm. So Z needs to go in. All right. Now. That's pretty much the way we build them. Okay, I'm not going to build the bottom ones. So what you're looking at now is you're looking at this really hard angular thing that you're trying to get a blend and to get that round to come up over the claw and make it all look set, um, which to be honest is not that easy. Okay, so you want to start with all the usual things. You want to do your fillets over here. So let's do fillet edge. All right. I'm going to go with about 0.2. And just do these outside edges. You don't have to worry about too much about the inside ones. Of course, for rendering purposes, you're not going to see them anyway. Okay, so you're going to grab these. Uh, and you, and you. Uh, and usually, that will give you a lot of trouble in Rhino. Today it went pretty well, actually. All right, so what we want to do now is we want to extract all these top surfaces. Let's turn off our gem for now. So we're going to go extract surf. Oops. Just the top ones. Okay, so we can delete them. Alright, what we want to do now is we need to do a blend surface. Alright, so we're going to do a blend surface across here. I don't know if this is a surface seam. I doubt it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run the command split edge to split that edge exactly in half and this edge exactly in half. Alright, so split edge you on the middle and run it again you on the middle all right now we're going to do a blend surf across these two edges okay so blend surf from you to you to you to you press enter you to you to you to you press enter all right let's preview it see what we've got going on over there okay so how much you, how how much bulge you add to it is going to be kind of up to you. I'd probably work with, I don't know, say that much. All right, that looks nice and round. It gives us what I need. So I go, okay. Now, if the gods of CAD are happy with us, that'll just all join up. So I'm going to try an array. Array polar around F4, six articles. And let's see if it's going to join. Yeah, we're in luck. 
Today is our lucky day, George. Okay, so the last thing we'll do now is make this look set. Alright, so let's show our gem again. Okay, so you've had a little bit of experience with the cage edit command, but not a whole hell of a lot, alright? So I'm going to get into that a little bit. So cage edit, then you've got a bounding box. Now this bounding box that we're going to create has information about it. The X, the Y, and the Z information, alright? How many points in, in Y, how many points in X, in Z, and how many in X, right? So I want to have a lot more fine control over what's happening on this section, just up here. I'm not too bothered with what's down here, but you can't get to decide where you want the information. So if I break this up, like, I want a lot of help. I want to need about at least three or four sets of control points up here. I've got three, four, eight, ten. So I need to probably put about 11 points in Z to work with, all right? So I'm going to go in Z, I'm going to put in, say, 12, all right? Let's press enter and have a look at how many points we've got. I think that's probably maybe been a bit much. All right, so I'm going to go back to 10. So I'm going to go, oops, okay, so I'm going to go back to 10 points on that. So, cage edit, bounding box, and, ah, having a hard day, George, sorry. Cage edit, bounding box, and in Z I'm going to go 10, maybe. Okay, I'm happy with that. So what we want to do with these 10 points, we want to pull them up and over the stone a little bit, just to make everything look set. So I'm going to grab those over there, and then in this view, I'm going to go scale 2D, scale 2D from F4, and I'm going to just pull those points in a bit. And then what you do is just have a look at where you are here, all right? Make sure that everything is still looking okay. I'm going to let go of these points using the control key. I'm going to repeat the command up here which is scale 2D center from F4. Let's pull that in. Okay, and we're looking right over there. So what I might do with these guys is grab all those points, pull them down, I'm holding the Alt key, something like that. And I'll let go of the bottom ones again. And we're gonna nudge these ones down. And you can tell what's happening is I'm pushing down just that point so that it's kind of looking a bit set, alright? I'm going to leave all the outside points. It's just going to take a little bit of tweaking to get whatever you're happy with, alright? So I'm going to pull these ones straight down. Let's have a look. Alright, so I'm kind of happy with where that is at the moment. Uh, my life is not going to be any worse off by having it looking like that. It's not big and high and up in the sky. Actually, looking inside there, I think we can probably pull this head section down just a little bit, right? So I'm going to run a cage edit again. I'm going to use less points this time because I want a more sort of general... I'll put that back on about, say, five points. So I'm going to pull these down toward the stone just a tad. Look in here. Okay, and I'm going to scale those in just a... Mm, do I need them all in? Yeah, why not? See? Yeah. Okay, so I'm happy with where that is now. The last thing we've got to do is cut away to get the stone floating a tad. Alright, so I'm going to just pull that down just maybe like that. Alright, we're happy where that is. So we're going to cut the stone out of it now. Alright, so you can use the gem cutter. I don't like using gem cutter. It sucks ass because none of its none of its parameters are correct for what we need. So the easiest way to do this, middle click that, go MSR, click plus. Alright, that makes a copy of the gem over itself. Then use the scale option to just pull it 101. Okay, press enter. Now you've got two gems in there. Alright, so if we put this on... Um, wireframe, you've got two gems. Take the outside gem and explode it. Okay. If you now take this and you boolean difference with that outside gem that you just created at 1%, whoa, got some inverted geometry in there, what's happening? Um, whoa, where are those naked points? Where are they? Oh. Mark, next, mark, next, mark, next. 
Mark, next. Okay, so if you're wondering what I'm doing, we've got some naked edges in here that have killed the geometry a little bit for us. So what we're going to do is go in and see if we can fix it up. All right. We've got points anywhere else. That's all of them. Okay, so we're going to delete those and we're going to try and join edge. Okay, so let's go... Okay, mark and next. Mark and enter. Right, so the same place. I've just joined that up. Okay, so let's go join edge. object does not have naked edges so we fixed that all up so basically what happened is there was some issue over here and we've patched up the naked edges so now let's grab this and boolean difference with that if everything's worked well what we have is an outline cut exactly around this gem beautifully so that there's no um the surfaces are not into each other. So the way to test that of course is you've got to make sure that there's no intersections between them. I'm not going to use this gem anymore so I'm just going to explode it. Um, and I'm going to run the intersect command. Intersect, select objects to test, you and you, press enter and found zero intersections. So if it finds zero intersections that means the gem and the metal are not into each other anywhere at all. Alright so really what we've got is we've got the thing looking set. Okay, so when you go for a render of this, you shouldn't have any garbage in the gem. So let's hit a render. I'm just going to put on quick render mode, whatever it is. So you shouldn't see any metal intersecting into the stone. The stone will come up looking beautiful. All right. This is the number one place where most guys doing rendering go wrong. All right. This is the most critically important thing you need to do to get your renders to look really good, George. Soften off all those edges, blend it in, make it look set, um, and then you're all good. Okay, so I hope this answers um, your query about that. I'm going to reply to your email. I'll include a link to the YouTube on this, okay? Cheers, Chris. Out.